This is a big episode. This is huge. This has never that- been done by any podcast ever. Ever. Never been done before. It's the first time you're seeing this anywhere, but... I can't believe it, it's taken us five years to do this. Yeah. You guys know all the show is called Zane and Heath Unfiltered, and for some reason, it's never been just Zane and Heath. <laughs> it's always been Zane, Heath, and four other people. It's, we bring the party. Exactly. And having Matt and Mariah is still like a lot of people. Having four people on a podcast is... It's a lot. We do have some interesting things, especially since it's just the two of us. Yeah. We're we don't, gonna, we're we don't get really We don't have it. Matt and Mariah to just like bug us. Yapping to get under... Ear. Exactly. <laughs> just yapping the whole time. We can really, really get to know each other. Okay. On a deeper level. This is going to be... Raw. It's gonna be real, this, authentic. This episode is unfiltered. raw, real, exactly. And Mariah's not here, unfortunately. But this, this is for the first time, gonna be raw, real, and authentic. All right, I'm ready. Okay, should we just jump into Let's it? Let's jump into it. We got our new brews. You know Ow! what that means? We're getting euphoric, baby. It's, it's coming, coming up, baby. Woo! Oh my god, the intro <laughs> song. Oh, oh my. God. We do everything ourselves. There you go, baby. Uh, uh. Papa. Welcome back to Zane and Heath Unfiltered. Let's do it together. Baby. Yeah, yeah. Welcome Let, back to Zane, Zane and Heath, Heath unfiltered. unfiltered, baby. I'm Zane. I'm Heath. And we are Unfiltered. And it is the new year, everybody. Happy New Year, baby. I it hope is everybody 20- had a, a great holiday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what is it? Today is the first that we're posting this on, right? No, no. I don't know actually I think, what I think day it ends this- up being actually the new year. R- really? Yeah. I think next Tuesday. No is- way. I don't I believe it's the first. that. It's the first. Oh happy my. Happy new year, baby. Well, legitimately happy new year. Oh. All of our audio listeners, I bet y'all are hung over as shit. You know you are. You know you are listening to this. That's and if okay. you're not, and if you're not hung over, then you're probably working out, getting that new year's oh, yeah, um, resol- resolution started. Does- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got mine started six months ago, <laughs> but I feel like if I didn't, I, I would have definitely gotten started today. Well, I would have made an admission. What's your, your uh, resolution? <clears throat> Genuinely, my yeah. resolution like, that I really, really, really want to like just start. It's the 27th today, so I have a few days yeah. to think about this, but I really, first of all, I really need to stop biting my nails. Oh, that's a good one. It's so bad. You guys don't see it on camera, and I, I will never just get... I've posted it maybe once or twice in my life like they're, either on they're s- absolutely disgusting uh, just i was about to say asinine is that a word what's asinine mean asinine like it's crazy Cra- uh no i meant more like disgusting yeah but no it's crazy too it's asinine these nails <laughs> asinine just a new word i learned um yeah they're really gross and that's one thing that i i'm afraid of for my future the, girlfriend uh, slash wife i just i don't want her to look at my fingernails and be so disgusted with me that she does not want to continue this relationship. Well, that's think, one thing I that if, I really worry about. If she's going to break up with you because of your nails, then it's probably not. No, 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 not break. No, no, it's not break up with me. Or it's just not give first, you a chance. In, the first in, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there, I wouldn't be, that's, that's not a shocker to me though. Like, I feel like when you see someone has really gross nails, you think, oh, they're a dirty person. And then from there, you kind of just assume right. that they're, dirty in other places too which i don't like i'm not this guy doesn't have self-control yeah i think it's, i think it says this guy has you, a hard time focusing not, and not only that those are like very broad but i got something something very specific which i think you could really assume that i do if i'm if i'm sitting there eating my fingernails what else am i eating mm. you know what i mean what am i putting my mouth on uh, what are you, you know putting I mean? your mouth on no but like your, your fingers are so dirty. Like, your, what are your hands are the second or third most dirty thing during the day because you're touching everything. Yeah, I'd right? probably you're say touching one. The, you're touching the faucet. You're touching water. You're just touching rails. Just you ever seen a, under a microscope of what the dirt under your fingernails looks like? I don't. Imagine imagine seeing mine. It, with dude, just like, a, because your mouth is the dirtiest place on your body. It would make you not want to bite them anymore. Yeah. There's like, it's actually disgusting. Like living things under your fingernails. And if you t- took a microscope to your mouth, you would want your mouth shut for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's true. You'd be, it'd be so disgusting. But um, I've tried different ways to stop. I've put that, that, that gross shit the, on. The tasting stuff. I don't like the taste of it. It doesn't work. Why don't you just go old school? Just throw on mittens. I, I tried that for half a day. 
it's impossible to get anything done. You, it was like kind of like what I had to do for my transplant because I kept scratching in the night. Yeah. So I had to put socks over my hands because remember I scratched my head so yeah. hard I started bleeding everywhere. Yeah, that's that's why they even allow yourself to do that. You see, I wouldn't. I just do the pat method. The well, it was, it was I was in the middle of the night. Like I didn't know I was doing it. Like I was sleeping. Oh, just, like, while you're sleeping, so you can't just help it. Digging my plugs. Okay, out. so that makes sense. You have to like that's something you have to wear. But you're also yeah. sleeping, so you're not going to really even notice. I'm fully awake and conscious in doing this. So I just need to figure out a way where I almost need to reward myself like a child mm -hmm. to not bite my nails. Like for every millimeter my nail grows. There you go. I, I buy myself something nice. It turns into the opposite addiction. You come yeah. out with like foot long. <laughs> but there, there, there has to be like, look at it. Oh man. Just tell me ways to make it better. I would say... You want to go low profile? I'd Chop go your hand off. Yeah, uh, thimbles. <laughs> thimbles, just, just just five thimbles. You, I, I bet you won't put your uh, fingers in your mouth if you chop them all off. But I yeah, think just really, really focus. Do you remember when I did attempt to stop biting it for like a month or two, mm -hmm. and it was actually growing back? And I was really excited about. It. I was taking like little uh, update pictures every week because I wanted to like do yeah. like I. And I would you wanted you wanted the before and after. Yeah. Do do you ever do you ever screenshot different pictures and then you go back and forth really quick? Yeah. To yeah. see that. So that's what I was doing with my nails and my it was working. Like I was so excited and then I just fell over the deep edge again. It's kind of like a, a diet, right? Or like yeah. uh, the fitness transformation. You just like it, you're starting to see results. It's really exciting and then you just stop. Since this is my second time with the transformation, I actually kept going this time and didn't quit. Maybe if I do it the second time. Yeah, sometimes it, nail so, sometimes you got to give it a couple tries. Exactly, just, well, because you quit once doesn't mean you exactly you're a failure. You just never try not again. don't quit. Wow, this is such a positive times. episode already. I'm really excited about this one, especially in the new year. People are going to be so motivated to start with whatever they want to get started on I, because how of about listening. This? I to believe us. in you. Thank you. I appreciate you that. Cheers to that. All right, so I'm going to stop nail biting. Right. Another thing that I really have to quit. I mean, you already know it. It's the vape. The vape is very, yeah. very, very bad. It's killing me. It's causing me it's a lot of problems. It's giving you the black lung. The black lung. I would love to see a fast. I feel like back and forth, <laughs> back uh, before and after with my lungs. Inside of your body, because yeah. of that, I feel like that's what you need. And you know what's crazy? Everywhere in my body right now is like, woo! They're having a great time. Six months. I haven't put really alcohol in my body, right? Eating all this like clean shit. Everyone, every, everybody in here yeah, is yeah. just woo. And they're looking at the lungs. They're like, boy, when <laughs> you, come on, you, he'll get there. He'll get there because every, the blood's you, flowing everywhere. Have except you actually, for the lungs. actually tried genuinely like put it down for, I mean, I may have put it down for like a day. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was like traveling, right? All right, let me. <laughs> I, you, I, I I couldn't smoke it on the plane, so like it was just in my bag. So it, it was you, because I had to. If you wake up in the middle of the night to go pee, are you on the way to the bathroom grabbing it to hit it a couple times? Heath, that's not even the problem. I wake up with it. I wake in, up in with your it hand in my hand. Where is it? So your your body is oh, vaping while you're sleeping. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I I wake up like this. I wake There's up like no up. way. I, I swear. I swear. It's in my hand when I wake up. This morning, my mom scared the shit out of me. Today, she we 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 were in it. We were in a deep, deep, deep psychosis mm -hmm. sleep. <laughs> all right, we were exhausted because we were traveling. Right, we uh, you know going back from Florida to here, it's like the worst because yeah. of the time difference. Like you just get so tired. And I was in a deep sleep for like an hour and a half, and then I I wake up to my mom's figure right above my bed. I'm like. What? And my, my love flies, right? <laughs> just, she woke you, me. you got startled in the yes. <laughs> it just it launches, right? I'm like, mom, what? And I, I, she, she's sleeping. She was sleeping next to me. Uh -huh. She wakes up too. And um, it's not Danielle, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Zane, well, Zane's, Zane's sister my, is my here. My little sister's here. She's in the audience right now. People think- me Everybody's and, like, I knew it. People think me and Danielle are dating, which is- Anyways, um- yeah, launches out of my hand, and I'm like, "Mom, what?" And she's she goes, "Um, there, there's someone in the house." I'm like, "Mom, the the house makes noises. It's it's just it's an empty house, right? We, we just, we're still filling it Boy, up. Boy, that's slowly. that's green light for me. <laughs> Bulletproof vest on, <laughs> night vision goggles. Hey, I'm like, he is up and out. He's already dreams about you that. You already shit. hear the safe opening. The beep 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 beep. <laughs> 
Um, I fingerprint, I retinal scan or whatever. Yeah, that's like Heat's favorite words. Favorite words on the book <laughs> is, I think somebody's in the house. <laughs> And I keep telling her like, mom, mom, like it's, it's, I'm telling you it's, a no and then I, and then, it, then, then it kicks in. Right. Right. What if someone's in the house? I'm like, God, like, what if someone's in the house? Uh, there's been intruders before. There's somebody that snuck into my house once and stole a fly zapper. I still don't so understand that. Why but. wouldn't somebody be in the house right now? Like right. maybe it just happened to be the time you that just my mom got and little back, sister flew You know, in. maybe they thought you were still out of town. Exactly. So I come, I, I get, I get out of my room. What's your game plan? If there was an intruder, are you, are you waking up? Are you grabbing something? Are you reaching? Like you have a bat? Do you have like a, a candlestick? Absolutely. So I got up, mm -hmm. grab my piece. Oh, <laughs> I go to the staircase and, bliss. <laughs> and my mom's like, just listen. And you know, I'm not going downstairs yet. I don't want to be stupid. I'm not like running right in the middle of the, uh, yeah. of the, of the attack of the, you know, you got to be tactical about it. Exactly. Exactly. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking men in black. I'm thinking, uh, call of duty okay. you know, at this point. And she's like, listen, listen, listen. And goes, I'm like, Ice machine. I, I, immediately in my head, I was like, I, it's the air of it. Like I've, I've heard this noise before. And then we hear it again. And it sounds, it does. It's, it does, it's not the same tempo. It's like a different tempo. Like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't this time, this time it was, it was that. Okay. Time, you know what I mean? And then I was like, okay, mom, that was a different tempo. Let's wait for it again. And we hear it again. And then like, it was clear the vents. I'm like, oh my God, mom. I was like, she's like, I'm so scared, honey. I'm going to go sleep on the couch. I'm like, that's fine. You can sleep on the couch, but there's, there's nothing in the house. It's, it's the, uh, people were probably sitting there like, oh, who's in the yeah, house? Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I left you hanging like that. But yeah, nobody was in the house. Um, I don't even know where I was going with this. <laughs> where was I going with this story? <laughs> I think I just want to show off that like I have a piece, so don't come to my house. I keep I it, we keep it safe in this house, especially right. when I got the family in town. Uh huh. Um, but I, I I generally don't know where I was going with this. I think it's oh vaping. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, and and that's why because I almost hit my mom in the face with it. Right. So I shouldn't. Have, I I need to quit vaping because I need to protect my family. She could have lost an eye. Yeah. So that's the moral um, of the story right there. No, no. I mean, just like, just real talk though. Vaping is just so bad and I just have to stop. You just, and that's, and that's all I have left right now. That's if I just quit that. Yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty healthy. You'll be amazing. I'll be incredible. I'll be at a hundred percent compared to what I was. I wish I could, ago. I wish I could be like, this is the best I've ever felt. You know what I mean? Like, obviously you're going to feel better. Um, yeah. And you know what? I can't even tell people I'm healthy because that's just a lie. Yeah. Like, yeah, I exercise every day. I eat, I eat really good now. I but don't you're, really put alcohol in my body. Zane, you're a smoker. You're a smoker. And you that's have, like... You have that label. W w that's probably top top two things you could put in your body. That's like very, very bad mm -hmm. for you. And one of the two is smoking. What's crazy to me is that the like the studies haven't even come out yet. I feel like in 30 years... I don't need studies, Heath. Once you open... I don't know who it was. Whoever opened that vape in front of me, the, what it looks like inside that vape. Oh, it's disgusting. That was it. When you see like the, you don't need uh, any like the, the filtered system. Oh, you don't need any studies, any studies to tell what? you that that shit is bad. Once you open up a vape, guys, take your vape right now. Take Can your I vape. Pop it? Yeah, guys, you're gonna you're gonna freak out. You're gonna freak <laughs> out when you see how these vapes are made. Okay, I have like this very pretty like flume one that you'd get like at a gas station, right? You know, they make it pretty. Yeah, they make it tough. They don't want you to know. Yeah, they they, don't, want you to they don't want you to know. Wow. The person wow. that showed me, they opened it with like a hammer. I Like it's mm. it's tough yeah, to Yeah, that makes sense. We have, to sh we have to show it. Do you want me to break it open? Yeah. Do you have an extra one? <laughs> Let's do it. Break it. I don't need it. Let's do it. Uh, it. Just knowing right here, I have 10 fresh ones in my bedroom waiting it's so for funny me. Because you can't get them out here anymore, like the flavored ones. So he's got a he's got a lady on the load that he goes to <laughs> that he buys Costco wholesale size. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to be a better man. Hey, don't break don't break. All right, we're good. Don't break. Are you ready? Oh Zane. That's this looks like it was made in a garage. Look at that. And this, you're just smoking. Yeah, this is this is a, a child's high school science project. Wait, give, me the, give me the... Don't squeeze it. You ready? There it goes. Boom. 
What scares me about day. that stuff is the fact that normal, like cigarettes, things like that, is like a dry smoke. Zane, that's wet into your lungs. So you're yeah. breathing in that moisture. Wow. That's disgusting. That made me want to smoke at least 15% less. Um, that's a and start. I hope to, and I hope to get to 100 by January 1st. It was really brave of you. I can't wait to tell you about my... Uh, my uh, No, 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 no. I don't... Uh, I just told you my New Year's resolution. Oh, you want to hear my resolution real quick? Yeah, no shit. Yeah, why Why do I look like the one that needs the yeah, problems yeah, yeah. that yeah, I yeah, need yeah. to fix? Um, I haven't put too much thought into it yet, so this is going to be me just kind of winging it on the spot of what I would like to change. Oh, you're just too perfect. Oh, you, Oh, I, I just have to... Mm, oh, I, I just, just... Oh, I can't think of anything uh, that I could better myself. And there's got to be... There's got to um, be... I would, I would like to get back into the shape that I was in. I okay. Zila. Okay. Um, I'd like to start doing more cardio again. Yeah. I realized how out of shape I was again. Yeah. When I was coming back to LA, when I yeah. just had my flight here. Are, really? I, you don't, like, I feel like you don't look out of shape. I feel you, you don't work out a lot, but you definitely have, you definitely have, um, you're maintaining your like eating, which is yeah. good. I'm like, I'm like decent with eating. Like, obviously like I have like bad days or whatever and things like that. I've been on a sweet kick since I've been in Tennessee. I've mm. had. I think cumulative probably 60 100 cookies 60 cookies at least it's the holidays man at least yeah. my mom's been baking fresh every single day and, and, she, and, and there's a reason why she does it when you're And I'm not, I'm not going to do that to my mom I'm not going to yeah. do that don't like if if she bakes fresh cookies just eat them don't put that on your mom no, because then she's going to feel don't, bad. Don't put that on your mom. I'm just, I'm doing it for her. No, I know she's watching this and now she's feeling like shit. You just did the, what, you just did that now. You just mom, did that to her. <laughs> no, she's making cookies because she knows you don't eat like that here. Exactly. It's a treat. Exactly. It's a treat. When I went to fly back to LA, so there's no uh, direct flights from where my parents live. Mm -hmm. So I have to do a, a commute, a, a, yeah. uh, one stop and then go. So <clears throat> it's stupid, by the way. You got to go out of the way to Charlotte and then from Charlotte back here. But I had my first flight and I had about an hour-ish layover between that and then my flight to LA. And we land early. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I'll get off, maybe get a little snack. Yeah. Kill some time. Mm -hmm. We sit on the runway for, I'm not joking, 45 plus minutes because none of the terminals are open. Exactly. And they, they probably weren't prepared for you to arrive 45 minutes early, right? Well, we, were like, we were like 20 minutes early. Oh, okay. But we still sat there and just waited and waited. And then I'm looking at my phone and my next flight started boarding. As I'm still on the plane, I'm like, oh, this is bad. And they don't care. They don't care I have if you miss it. I have 30 minutes before my flight takes off. Yeah. They're boarding. They're boarding. And uh, dude, the reason, the reason I don't check bags is because I don't want to have to deal with checking it on, getting it afterwards, dealing yeah. with that shit. So, but I don't know why I always get stuck with having to check a bag, my carry on. You had to do that again, dude, I'm going carry on only. So I don't have to do it. You keep it above whatever I get up there. They're like, they give me a bag tag and I'm like, please, are I, you getting there last? It's, it just like depends on your boarding group. So I was Were you I, in the back of the plane, kind of like middle. Oh, okay. But it's also a small plane, but this thing, this is new. I don't know what this is, but they gave me a valet bag tag. So it goes under the plane, but it doesn't go to your next destination. You have to sit there in that tube oh, and wait for I didn't somebody even know that to go. Thing. I didn't either. You have to wait for them to go under the plane and start bringing the bags up to you in that little like uh, walkway when you get off the plane. Yeah. So now my flight's taking off in 15 minutes and I'm sitting there waiting for them to bring my bag up. I'm at terminal E. I got to get to B in 15 minutes before this thing's taken off. Finally, they bring my bag up. I grab it and I'm not joking, Zane, full blown sprint, full like charging through this. And there's no like, and it's the holidays. You don't want to miss a flight. It was insane. Yeah. So I'm running as fast as I possibly can. And I'm like getting queasy because I'm pushing myself because you're out of shape. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I dead ass think it was probably a mile, mile and a half I had to run. Yeah. Damn. It was so far. And I'm, it, it's embarrassingly fast how I'm running. Like if, if and somebody it makes saw, you, it makes you, it makes you look like that you, you like, don't have your shit together. It makes yes, you look exactly. like you showed up late right. and now everyone's waiting on you. And, and you're running full sprint and people are looking, you're, you're asking for all the attention. Yeah. And I, 
dude, if I would have saw myself, I'd have been like, geez, it's not that serious. Exactly. You know what I mean? I hate that. I hated this feeling. I finally get to my gate. As I'm running up, I see the, uh, you know, the sign on the TV where it shows like where you're going. Yeah. It says closed. I run up to the lady. I'm like, please don't tell me it's closed. She's like, yeah, we just closed. And there's a guy next to me that missed it too. And he was like, yeah, as of 30 seconds ago. And like gave the lady a look. Oh. And I was like, please, please, I'll do anything. Like, I need to get on this flight right now. I have to get on this flight. Sorry, it's closed. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, the there's plane, a- the plane's still there. You can see that you can clearly. It's, it's not like the plane. Exactly. Has- it's five minutes before takeoff time. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm like, please, please. Like, I cannot miss this. Well, flight. did you tell her the situation that it was a, it was a one stop? I was okay. like, we landed 45 minutes ago. I've been sitting on the plane waiting to get off. We finally just got let off and I just ran here. She's like, nothing I could do. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I'm sitting there and is just as I'm about to walk away and call it because this is the last flight of the night. I would have had to got in a hotel. Oh, my and waited God. Waited till the next morning to fly. As I'm getting ready to turn around and walk away, her phone on her desk rings. And she's like, yeah. Okay. All right. Hurry up. Get on now. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. So I run onto the plane and then you're that guy that they've been, you know, yeah, like you're, yeah, yeah. you're sitting on the plane. Oh, like, why, are we, why are we not taking off? I was that guy that had to come walk on, but I got on the plane. So I was super excited, but I'm dripping. Like I'm actually dripping sweat. And those ACs aren't powerful enough in the plan. But man, was it brutal. Uh, but I made it. I did it. And that, did, did that, that guy me, next to you also make yeah, it? That made me realize I was like, I need to get back in shape for or that just reason. Plan your, plan your day better. You want to know what's really funny? What? There was uh oh man. You know how people talk really loud to get attention? Mm-hmm. Like they just like. They don't need to be talking about what they're talking about yeah. in public. Yeah, I can name a few. There's a couple. It's a little couple. Mm-hmm. And they have a baby, right? It's it's a little couple? What do you mean? They're little people. Oh, little people. Okay. And they are in the row in front of me. Mm-hmm. And they're like with their kid. The kid can't talk. It's like maybe like one and a half, two, okay. something like that. And uh, she's like talking to the kid. The kid can't talk back. And she's just like... That's okay because we have more money. And I'm like, now my ears are freaking out. I'm just like, here we go. Here we go. She She just says one thing that makes no sense to a baby. Right. You're like, why are you talking to a child about it? And she's not talking to her husband at all? No. To the the child. Yeah. She's like, that's right, baby, because we're going to be millionaires, baby. Right, baby? Isn't that right, baby? We're about to be millionaires. And I'm like, what is going on? She's like... How'd you do? You did, you did good on season two, right? We just got to hope they, they get us back for season three. And <laughs> oh, I'm like, she's, oh, oh, she just wanted my, someone to ask her, yeah. what show are you on? Yeah. Well, that's why you got to be good, baby. You got to be good on season three oh, so we can get season three again because we're going to be multi-millionaires. Season three? What and show like, she on? I don't know. Hey. I, I tried like looking. <laughs> I tried looking. <laughs> at, sorry about that. I tried looking it up and like finding them, but like she just on and on about, that's right, baby. Because how much are we going to have? We got millions of dollars. And well, like, I mean, there's not a lot of shows with little people on there, is there? We, I think sure there's we quite a few. I, I, I've already tried looking. All that nosing around, you couldn't just figure out. Mm, I'm sure. I know. Heath, and she wanted so bad for someone to ask her what show she was on. I know. I you just, should have just asked I just, her. I didn't want to give it. Imagine she was like, <laughs> stop being so nosy. Get out of my business. That would have pissed me off. Yeah. I would have. That would have. That would have been. My it point. was just so funny how, like, the baby has no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. But are you sure she wasn't like, you know how they talk to the babies, but they're like trying to nag at the dad or something like it's they're using their baby to talk to. Somebody oh, well, else. they they were fighting a little bit on the plane when they first got on. So maybe she was doing, a, you know, when a mom or dad would talk to the ba- babies and they would say some, you know, for an, for example, well, that's be because, like, well, that's because daddy doesn't make enough money. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, directed towards the dad and yeah. wants the dad. You don't know. If, uh, You're being really messy today. I guess you do take after your dad. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, 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 yeah. Those type of. But you're saying the dad was nowhere, like nowhere around. Like, no, he was just in the uh, opposite seat on the other side. But it was just really funny. Um, But then I ended up talking to her because she was waiting for her bag at the end. Or no, she was waiting for a stroller. So you did end up talking to her. She was just like really frustrated about having to wait too. Yeah. That she had to wait for a stroller. Where? Under the plane. So they checked my carry on. Oh, and she had this to was your, okay, okay. I so thought this was, was like, like while you guys were sitting on the flight, you guys were at midair and no, she no, was no. just how, like just howling about her seasons. I was like, you had all the time in the season world. Season three, to, baby. <laughs> season three. Uh, we can, we can figure this out. I know. If Mar- if Mariah was here, she would be able to figure it out. It would be up on the TV seconds. right now. Yeah. She would have, she would have done. She um, done 
But she ended up being a, a really nice lady from that brief conversation that I had. Oh, I thought you were about to say the show name. <laughs> I, dude, I she go, ended up I being Googled, that really nice Googled, lady from Little People Small everything. World. Everything. Big People or Little <laughs> Little People. What was that show with L the Little People Big World? Little People Big World. Yeah. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our sponsor of this podcast, SeatGeek. You guys know a lot of artists are on tour right now, including Drake. Drake is actually coming to my hometown, mm -hmm. Sunrise, Florida, baby. And, you know, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be the first one in the front row, baby. Screaming, flashing. There you go. And you guys know that I'm only going to be using SeatGeek to get the best price ticket I possibly can get. And with over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. Exactly. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and much, much more. And with artists like Drake, the 1975, Jonas Brothers, Post Malone, all being on tour right now, you're not going to want to miss it. Exactly. They put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you are getting a good deal. And each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10. So look for green dots. Green means it's a good deal and red is uh, not the best deal. And every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. So if you're looking to go to a show, a concert, a festival, or whatever you're trying to go to, just know we have the hookup for you guys. All you got to do is use code UNFILTERED for $20 off your first ticket at SeatGeek. Again, that's $20 off your first purchase with promo code UNFILTERED. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the app today. Thank you so much, SeatGeek, for sponsoring this podcast. We love you. Getting to the airport, uh, going to Florida, mm -hmm. miserable. I was, by the way... I remember I showed you, like I showed you off a little, I was using your duffel bag that you just got me mm -hmm. from the last episode. I was so Everybody commented, said you didn't like it. Uh, well, it, it, I mean, I can see why, because the way I hated the, I hated, I hate watching myself, especially on the podcast, because it doesn't look like I was excited about the bag, but I really was. I was just confused in yeah. the beginning. And then I got really excited because it, I actually needed it. He the likes bag. it. He sent me pictures with yeah, it. Yeah, I, I do like it. I like it. It's, um, it's just hard. It's just hard when you're on camera. Like, you, you know. I'm, you got to, yeah. Uh, the next day I was going to Florida. I packed up my bag. I was really excited to use it. I could fit so much in there. Um, let fit my laptop, everything mm -hmm. pretty much that I needed to get. I didn't need to bring like a, a, a carry on bag and my backpack. Right. Right. I just brought that one bag and I was, you know, I was thrilled. I was like, this is now, this is what I'm going to be using. And I'm on my way to the airport. I leave much earlier than I'm supposed to. And GPS says, like 40 minutes. Yeah. And that's 40 minutes is pretty good, especially during the holidays. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it's awesome. like double the amount of time, but you're like, okay, it's expected. Yeah. And as we're getting closer, this is what I hate about GPSs and maps, right? On your phone. It never tells you the traffic inside the airport. Oh yeah. Just to get even, to like, yeah. even like when you put a terminal, it doesn't tell you the traffic in there. It just shows it green Yeah, yeah, yeah. until you're like, right there like in your uber like once you start getting closer and closer and you're like maybe like yeah once you a mile that. away you're then it just uh, it just updates yeah and then it's like okay well oh now it's an extra 35 40 minutes i was five minutes away yeah you gotta wait and until you hit like uh in and out to see how bad it's gonna be fix it yeah put that if there's actual traffic in there put actual traffic mm -hmm. in the map so i can leave two hours before if i need to but anyways we get there, we're um we're about to get into the airport and it's just back to back traffic. It said it was gonna be yeah. like another 35, 40 minutes actually on the thing. And I'm looking at the traffic and it's just not moving. And I had time to to walk it, but it all, but it was yeah. it, it was just it was just it was uh, we were still pretty far. And I'm seeing other people starting to get getting out of their getting out, and I was like fine and i and i was you know like you're fine up. and it was right before it was right before that ramp you know the ramp yeah to get up. so it was right before oh. the ramp i was like all right um you're good to go i don't want to make it i, I don't want to keep him stuck in this traffic with yeah me. people that are getting out in the middle up there then that driver is it's stuck, stuck there, there for an hour that sucks. To and get... i didn't want to do that to him yeah. because he doesn't get paid uh during that trip so i was like why don't you drop me off here and then you can like kind of escape from this and i get out and i I'm starting to realize how heavy this bag is because <laughs> everything is in this bag. Right. And it's too heavy to hold on like one arm the whole time. So I, I have like that lanyard thing that where you can like kind of switch, you could uh, yeah, hold yeah. bag like a purse and that shit was just hurting my shoulders. And I kept Do on, you have a, did you have a rolly bag too? No, 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 no. I only had that bag. That no, was no, like, no, no, that was my bag. carry on bag. That just was that. my, that was my carry on bag. Got it. And bro, I had to walk legitimate like a mile and a mile Oof. and a half to get to the terminal and bro 
it was hurting so much and I've yeah. never hated this bag more. That's funny. Than this and you moment. Know what's funny? I, I specifically specifically got you the ones without the rolly wheels because I was like, you'll never use that. Oh my God, that would have been perfect. <laughs> dude, I really needed the wheelies because, dude, my sh And so it builds character. I felt, I felt really good. I was like, oh, I'm cool in this jacket. I'm not sweating. I was drenched by the time I got yeah. to the airport. I was so hot. I couldn't get any cooler than what I was before. Uh -huh. And I get on the plane and I'm drenched. ACs are blown, but it's just not cooling me off. I'm like this. And it was a red eye. It just, everything just started to Compound. suck very, very yeah. badly. And yeah. And then I got there and that was fine. And then coming back with my mom and little sister was really, really bad. The you had turbulence too. Bad. Dude, mine was absurd. Keith, it was definitely the worst to date when it came to turbulence. Taking out the taking out that Cancun trip, that there will never be anything worse than that Cancun trip. <clears throat> the Cancun trip where I, where it was so bad, we were going through a tropical storm. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. People were screaming, "We're all gonna die!" and everyone's screaming. Nothing was worse than that. But this one was definitely right there next to that Cancun trip, bro. It was rocking and it was rocking bad. People were starting to cry. There was a lady right next to me, like on the other side. She was just howling she was just like ah, 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 like just screaming and i thought like i didn't know if she was laughing because uh -huh. it almost it wasn't exactly the way i sounded right now but she was like it almost sounded like she was just laughing like nervously uncontrollable noises yeah and i was like because it was so bad where it was kind of funny because it it was it was just like oh this is like it wasn't uncalled for yeah and not only that, it just, it felt like there was nobody flying the plane. It was almost like the pilots disappeared or they got a heart attack. And now this plane is just like kind of going yeah, off. Yeah. Of, and the lady, it, I'm, I look over and she's hysterically crying and it's just getting worse and worse. It, it, it just, keep, it's just, it keeps getting mm -hmm. worse. And it gets to the point where the pilot just starts apologizing on like the intercom. Yeah. When he starts apologizing, that's when he knows too bad because there's been bad turbulence and he doesn't even right. call it out. He's calling it out now. That's how bad it is. Flight attendants, they're still serving. <laughs> this lady, is she a rock star. She's sitting there, she's sitting like, there serving the <laughs> meals and she's bringing me my hot tea, right? And I'm just like, I don't need it right now. Like there's no way I'm going to be able to drink this. And like, I don't want her to be, I don't want her to get hurt or burnt or fall. Right, because, right. And I'm like, no, you, no worries. You don't need to bring me my tea. And she's just like, no, I'm I got it. I'm picturing like cat in the hat. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> just just Bro, it was, it was crazy. But like, and they've, there's times where they have, they don't even do service when it's like half of that. But like this girl just wanted to, she was showing I think off. She, yeah. She was not only showing up, but I think it was a like good practice for her too. Like yeah, in yeah. case of like emergency, you know, if ever there's ever a hostage situation, mm -hmm. she needs to grab something for the, for the terrorists. Right. I, she wants to do it all. She wants to be able to like do it any She's trying to get on storm, that hurricane. Side, you know yeah. I mean? So I think she knew what she was doing, but like she was amazing. And um and as that's going on, my mom and little sister are in the like they're in they're like four seats, four rows behind me. I'm like, oh, my mom is probably freaking out because she's much yeah. worse than me when it comes to flying. I'm bad, but she's right, really right. bad. Um immediately as soon as there was like a good 30 seconds of calm, which was rare. I, I get up and I run to my mom's seat and I, and and Madison's like laughing with the bag. Yeah, <laughs> Madison's laughing. I'm like, oh my my mom is probably really bad right now. I look and she's literally in her seat like this. In tears. I, I, th I <laughs> thought you were saying she had the mask. <laughs> she pulled it down. In tears. Um, and she looks at me. She's like, honey, you need to get me a fucking drink right now. And I go to the stewardess. I was like, can you please get my crying mom uh, a drink? She really needs it bad. She's mm -hmm. she's really bad with flying, especially with turbulence. And she's like, oh, is your mom the one that's crying right now? I was like, no, no, it's another, it's another <laughs> one. And I want to know so bad how how the the back of the plane was because the oh. back of the plane is always the worst when it comes to turbulence i bet it was so bad even the pilot on the intercom was like and a big apologies for the people on the last few rows i'm sure it was like very bad for you he was saying like it, it i've never heard a pilot like speak that much after um a whole that, yeah, yeah a turbulence situation like that um, cause he was probably well, getting word that you got people in the back hysterically crying. crying like, yeah. Hey. Cause I, who knows how many people were crying, like in the, in the, in the cockpit, not in the cockpit, in the, uh, in the back of the plane, in the poor people section, in, in the poor people <laughs> section. Um, but yeah, that was a for sure an experience. And I felt so bad because I was kind of like, you guys should come, come back with me to LA after yeah. Christmas. And 
And yeah, it was just like kind of traumatic. Traumatic for all of us. I was kind of, I don't know why I wasn't freaking out. I was like laughing the whole time. I was yeah, you got, you got to make just, light of the situation. It was just, no, no, no. I wasn't laughing because like I, I was scared, but it was just, it was, I think comical that this, this w- was probably it. Yeah. You, you like, came to this grip. was yeah, probably yeah, yeah. it. Wow. Just right I, after the holidays, baby, we're going down. I was going to the bathroom when turbulence hit on my flight here. Yeah. We hit turbulence. Burp, burp. Uh, dude, it was, I'm, I'm very germaphobic when traveling. Like I don't touch like door handles. I'm always, I'm the elbow guy. I, you know, I kind of like, yeah, I'm the complete opposite. It's gross. Especially in like an airplane it. bathroom. Yeah. I, I'm feet up for the toilet seat, feet for the flush, everything. Oh, it's kind of, I like, it's kind of. Yeah, when I walk in, I do this. I go feet up, and mm-hmm. then I'll flush like that, seat down. So how do you open the? How do you unlock the, um, the airplane, lock? the door? Yeah, elbow, and then the little lever you got to slide elbow. You down. really? Oh, you really? But why I don't hate you? That why stuff. don't you just wash your hands after, or like do sanitizer in your seat? I don't have sanitizer with me. Why do I feel like you don't believe in hand sanitizer? Do you believe that it actually removes? I've never actually thought about it. But like, you're the type of person that I feel like would not believe in sanitizer. No, I'll look into it. I, I like do. you. I think you trust washing your hands with soap much more than just something in a bottle like that. I never really thought about it. I, I do use sanitizer if it's around. I'll just be like, get a quick little clean. Yeah. Um. But I was literally in the middle of going to the bathroom on this plane when we started hitting turbulence. And I am bouncing up and down, trying, like, I, I couldn't stop going. So I'm trying to aim, and then I'm falling forward. I'm no-handing this. <laughs> I'm literally back and forth like this, like, trying not to touch the wall. Oh, that's the worst, because you know you have to put one hand on your piche. Yeah, exactly. So, so it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not going everywhere. Right. Dude, horrible. Like I was all over the place. I'm surprised. Usually they make like a. They're, they're pretty good at knowing when turbulence is about to hit, and they'll and they'll tell everybody to take their seats. No, it's very on, like unexpected. Out of the blue. Out yeah. of the blue. Were you flying Frontier or something? American. American. Hmm. I was in the back. <laughs> we were hitting it bad. Oh, you were in the back. Back bad. back. On that flight, I was on the back. Yeah. It's like a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. You know, the roller coasters, the back seats are it's like kind of fun though. The second best seats. Kind of fun. But yeah, it was uh, it was pretty insane. Um. But we made it. Now I got to catch a flight in four hours to go he, back to Tennessee. Yeah, guys. Heath just flew in last night from uh, Chattanooga or uh-huh. Nash- uh, Chattanooga. Yeah, you have like a one stop. So you're flying yeah. from somewhere to get here. Yeah. And less than 24 hours, he has to be back on a plane because he decided to bring Deanie Weenie with. Yeah, I got to um, go. I got to go back and get. It's Dean. because of him, right? Yeah, pretty much. So my mom and dad are watching Dean right now. Um, Mariah okay. is in Pennsylvania still. She's going to meet me back in Tennessee, and we're going to fly back from Tennessee here with the cat and everything. It's just a lot. Like, I didn't realize, because he's very on edge and stuff when, like, traveling, and you have to, like, take him out. You got to hold him while you're doing the scanner, and then you got your bags. You got this. And then I have, like, my film cameras. Yeah. And you can't put the film through that, so you have to hand those over Yeah, and get the film hand-checked. So it's like, can you tell us the process of bringing an animal through an airport? I thought it was as simple. Oh, I thought it was as simple I, as put leaving that animal on that conveyor belt and letting them go through the TS. Uh, to I the, thought literally you just do it. I thought you just if it's in that size, you're good to go. Yeah. We showed up with him as we were getting like our boarding passes, and I was like, um, do I check in like an animal with you, or how do I like go about the bringing my or, cat or, on? Or you or you let him walk uh, through the right, thing right, by right. himself. It, it turns and the cat has to... He puts his hands <laughs> up like this. <laughs> oh, man. That'd be amazing. Feet on the yellow. It just uh, reminds me of Puss in Boots. Like, why did I yeah. imagine Puss in Boots? Uh, uh, but I thought it was going to be super easy. And then the lady's like, um, you need to call ahead of time if you're bringing a cat. I was like, what are you talking about? She's oh, like, there's you, only so many there that are allowed on the plane. You can't just show up and like check them in. Oh, oh like, okay. So that was one thing I know for sure that I wouldn't have done was to just show up with a pet. I would have, I would hundred percent like called or something to let them know like, Hey, what do I need to do to before getting to the airport with a pet? I saw like, I, I searched it on I'm sur- TikTok. I'm surprised you didn't like think of well, that. I searched it on TikTok and they said, you just got to like check them in. Why? We all get our information from that app. It's so embarrassing. Literally just type it in Google, but no, we'd rather do it on TikTok. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a, like, there's a reason why, right? Because there's somebody right there verbally telling you, verbally the telling yeah. you from an experience that they just experienced and, and I they most to watch it. just went to TikTok and just said yeah. it. And sometimes it is better. And I, get why you did that um but yeah they didn't say like on that video you need to call ahead but apparently if they already had so many cats i could have not been able to bring the cat 
And how um, many other cats did they have on this planet? I didn't like, see any let's, other ones. Let's be, let's be real. Yeah. But Do they keep pets under the plane? You, no, you put it under your seat. I, then, oh. I, then I don't see a lot then. I, I feel like I keep an eye out for people that are well, bringing to in be pets. honest, on my flight back here, I didn't even notice it, but the person next to me had a cat. All of a sudden, I saw them bend down and grab their bag and go... Oh, or are, like, the oh are the bags getting very discreet now? Yeah, they're just like to... small little carriers that you slide underneath the one in front of you. Uh -huh. So it's like you would never even know. Okay. But yeah, so we you do that and then they put like a little bag tag on the uh, pet carrier. Yeah. And then when you go through to like uh, take the stuff out to go through TSA, yeah. you have to put the carrier on the conveyor belt and you have to walk the cat through and hold it. You think anyone's ever been caught doing that? Like using their animals, horrible oh. by the way. Just using their animals to like Maybe. bring in stuff. It's 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 kind of genius. The cat shits itself while you're holding. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> just, just. Um, but yeah. So then you do that. It goes through. You get your bag back, and then you're good. Um, but yeah. So it was just like a lot having to deal with like the rolls of film, hand checking where I was doing the cat. So I, we just wanted to do it yeah. together again on the way back. Um, Are you bringing Dean next time? I Is still would. I still would, would much again? rather do this than put him up in, uh, like a pet shelter. You, uh, you don't trust anybody out here to watch like, your uh, cat. Absolutely not. Really, really. Do you hmm. genuinely like not trust anybody? Um, there's got to be. There's got to be a reason why you don't like think that someone will kill, like will hurt, not hurt him, but. Like, I don't think anybody I would forget to feed them or something because you're it's paying, not, you're paying them the, for a service. It's not the forget uh -huh. to feed. Um, you're saying like friends wise? There's a, friends or professional like cat, like professional oh, people that like. The thing is like, I know somebody that had a dog that they put up in like a shelter to go on vacation for like a couple mm -hmm. days. And obviously a dog is different, but one of the other dogs ate their dog. Um, and killed it. Oh, wow. Okay. I feel uh, so like that's they, a rare situation. So they came back and went to go get their dog and they're like, sorry, something happened where they just give them the other dog because <laughs> the dog is inside the other dog. Um, for like, I feel like, especially for Dean, Deanie weenie. Um, that's I think right. the say, best, say his full name. I think the best for him would be a private, like a private one, not somewhere where there's like a ton of cats. Yeah. Like someone that takes care of maybe like two or three and like is in a, Kind yeah, it's just combined. like he's he's still super young and I just don't want him to get into things because then like if he eats something that he's not supposed to, then we got to do another $4,000 surgery to like cut it out of his stomach. Yeah. Um, And then like our friends, like it, it's just like if a door is left open and he ran out, like it's just a lot. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, uh, I guess. But yeah, it was just, it was, I don't know. I didn't mind it. And so the cat is with your mom right now? Yeah. She just give him cigarettes and shit. Just secondhand smoke. Come here, Dean. <laughs> Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this podcast, HelloFresh. If you don't know what HelloFresh is, HelloFresh is a food delivery service where you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether your New Year's resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is there to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. And don't let recipe boredom strike because HelloFresh has more options than ever before. Dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 dinner options to choose from weekly and even more market add-on items that suit in any lifestyle. And HelloFresh is also there when your schedule is packed. You can do HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes designed to help minimize mealtime stress. And baby, I know we're all trying to revamp our eating habits, mm -hmm. so make sure to look to HelloFresh's wholesome health forward options, like over 30 calorie smart Ooh. and protein smart recipes each week. And the best part about HelloFresh is that everything comes right to your door in the perfect amount. You're not going to be throwing anything away. You're not going to be wasting any food, having to trash anything. It's all going to be right there. Everything you need to make that delicious meal. And honestly, the best part is trying to match what you're cooking to the picture that they mm -hmm. have on the menu. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to do your little your little assortments, your little, so little sauce art mm -hmm. on the plate. I try to match exactly to the picture every time. So it makes it like a fun game. Like, can I get it exactly to how HelloFresh does it? And baby, I win every time. 
So if you're ready to try HelloFresh, all you got to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash unfiltered free and use code unfiltered free for free breakfast for life. Wow. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash unfiltered free with code unfiltered free. Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for sponsoring this podcast. It's no wonder you're America's number one meal kit, baby. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, that's good. Uh, what did we do? We didn't do anything in Florida. Oh man, it, this shit is getting boring. boring. Every, it's it's not boring. Like it's it's just becoming very uneventful. It's like it's not feeling like Christmas anymore. Yeah. Um. Uh. It's crazy because I mean we've talked about this before already, but just you know, ten years ago, Christmas really felt like Christmas, and I was talking to my mom about this and she's like, well, it was because you were younger. I was like, I don't know. You didn't feel like it was Christmas when we were younger. Like it really felt like Christmas. She's like, I, no, it, she's like, no, when, when you're like, I think it's when you're getting older, like we wouldn't feel, uh, I, we knew it felt like Christmas for you guys, but it didn't feel like Christmas, Christmas for us. I'm like, okay. That like makes getting sense. And maybe, the maybe it, it is, maybe it is like kids that really just see it. But I don't know. Sometimes when I look at like, I feel like Mariah's family all really feel Christmassy. Yeah. Even when they're older. So, like, I don't think it's an older I thing. Think, I think it has to do with the size of your family. Because I know Christmas for me hasn't felt like Christmas because we used to have, like, everybody over when I was a kid. It would be a huge party and you get, like, your cousins are there, your aunts, yeah. uncles, everybody. And, and someone's like a, always coming up with an idea to do something. And, like, and all those like, ideas together, all those, like, brains together, it's, like, co- coming up with different Christmas every, stuff. Every year it's just been smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. Like, um, we couldn't come up with jack, jack shit. And that, like, we're all sitting there watching TV and we're like, we... We just don't know what to, like, even for dinner, like it was, it was Christmas day and we're like, let's go out to dinner. Everything was closed. It's like, we, we, we genuinely could just couldn't come up with anything to do or even leave the house or we had to just stay in there. But it's just like, it's just tough. It's tough with a small family. Like you're trying to come up with something Christmassy to do. And then you feel guilty. Like I'm sure, like, I think we all felt a little guilty. And then your parents feel bad because they they still want it to be special for you. Yeah. And I felt guilty. I I, like, don't get me wrong. I felt guilty too. I felt guilty that like, I'm. I can't come up with anything. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard with a small family. You just, you have the, you have the Christmas tree, you have the gifts, but like, then what? Yeah. I think that's why Mariah, like her family is 300 people that get to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of envy that. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. It's a party. It's a little overwhelming. It's overwhelming, but it's like fun. Yeah. You know, it's never a dull moment. It's intense. Yeah. Hers looked so funny this year. Did you see any like, yeah, I saw the stories. Yeah. She was so showing. I was just flexing on all of us. She knew. Her and Matt, they both got like the big family gathering. Yeah, yeah. What happened to us? It's what about what about our what about our time to shine when it It'll comes come. to the families? We yeah. just have to have ten ki- kids each. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Like people that have like grew up with small families, they're just like, I want a lot of kids, and then that's how that generation happens. Mm-hmm. And then and then from there, it becomes really small. Like when you have that big generation yeah. of, with a lot of kids and cousins, all those cousins, if they don't have a ton of like kids, then it it starts to get small. It's really weird mm-hmm. how that happens. Have as many babies as you possibly can. Yeah. Or we're thinking about having 14. Well, how much, how many would you actually like? I have? think four would be nice. I think four is a good number. Yeah. I have a feeling Mariah's going to want like eight. That's a lot. That's a, that's a lot. Cause if you think about it, um, that means if we start having kids when she's like 31, you're, po- you're popping babies at like 40. That's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but forties like forties the new thirty when it comes to popping out kids. Yeah, not when it There's, comes to their health. Like you, you start running. Into I mean, like when risks. that baby goes, when after that baby comes out, like you're good. But yeah, no, it's it's definitely. I remember my mom had. Well, how old was mom when she had you guys? She wasn't thirty. I think she was forty. She's fifty six, fifty five, fifty four. Once you get into the fifties, you're not you're, you're not supposed to really know their age. She was thirty eight. She was thirty eight. I you felt, were you were this close to. I being. felt very shitty. Um, that made me feel very shitty that I thought my mom was fifty or forty. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's years, years off. Before. That's not bad. Um, but yeah, it's just like it also becomes like harder for like the mother, like to have babies at that age. And yeah, um, I like for me, like I don't, I really don't mind. I don't mind having kids when I'm like that old. Is that weird? Well, I've been thinking about this a lot recently just because like obviously now we're engaged we're like thinking about the future and I get yeah everything and I I'm so jealous of the fact that 
of me. My <laughs> my mom and my grandma are so like close in age. How old are they? Um, my mom is sixty three, and my your mom is sixty three. Yeah, she looks great for her age. Thank you. I'll tell her that. Yeah, I'll tell her that. Um, and then my grandma, I think, is eighty. Yeah, oh Seven, my th- seventeen years. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's really good. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess. I think about when I'm eighty years old. You know what I mean? And your kids are sixty three. Like they would be. Fifty. I, they, I, I. That's just a, law, a longer life with your kids. Yeah. At the end of the day. And like, I like the fact that you know I've had my grandparents for so long. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. When you think it, when when you think of it like that, you do you do want to be with your kids like as long as you possibly can. Because once you have them, and once they turn like fifteen, twenty, in your head, and you're getting older, or if you have kids late, yeah, and they're starting to hit their twenties and you're like already really old. That's yeah, like I, I want to be able to you, like, I want to <clears throat> play with them. Like I want to be able to like throw the football around. I don't want to be like, you kind of want, you want to get old with your kids in some way. Yeah. You know? But yeah, it would be, it'd be nice to pop them out as quick as possible. We're probably going to try to just bang out a couple sets of Irish twins. Irish. Who's Irish. Yeah. I just found out about it. I think, <laughs> I think it's the coolest thing. You're, um, so you're, if you, you're, you're half Irish. <laughs> no, it's just the term for it. Oh, okay. Uh, so basically if you have two kids <clears throat> in the same year, they're called Irish twins. How do you do that? So if you get pregnant, nine months later, you give birth. Oh, you'd have to immediately do you it. You have to like immediately. <clears throat> do you think Mariah is going to like being pregnant? I, I think she will. Actually, yeah, no, she will. If that means that she gets the kids quicker. Oh, yeah. But like, that's pretty crazy. You could have two kids born in the same year. I think Mariah's going to hope to have tw- like twins and triplets just so she can make more in w- at one time. I, honestly, that would be <clears throat> ideal. Like oh, you yeah. can, it I, saves so much. I think time. my mom, I think my mom, like at first she was like terrified that it was twins, but I think, I think we had this discussion where discussion where she was like, Oh, that's great. Like, I don't, we don't do it again. It's like how you're, yeah. it's all happening at once. So like, I to, think, I think about like my <clears throat> brother, I feel bad for people that have twins that, you know, their finances aren't, you know, the best and they have a hard time like affording different things. Mm-hmm. Like my brother and his wife, are having like a hard time, like, like with a baby, you know what I mean? Like financially, like it's very expensive. Yeah. If you're playing like, cause they, they can't have another kid because they can't afford it. Yeah. But if they were in that boat and they had twins. Oh uh, yeah. That's just getting, it's not something that. that you're, it's not something that you're trying to do, but like you could get stuck with twins and then you're like, what do I do? Like, you know what I mean? Is there some sort of, um, <clears throat> what do you call it? A pay it forward system with a baby. <laughs> Not a pay it forward, but more like uh, some sort of charity where it helps out people that could only afford one kid, but they ended up popping twins that don't want to uh, give it up. Because yeah, that's like know. tough, you know? Yeah. I wish there was some sort of organization where like they could. Zane, did we just come up with a charity? That's that's a that's a really good, it's a, it's a cute charity. Yeah. Because like that, your situation with your brother, like that's, that sucks. Yeah. Like having twins and you genuinely can't afford more than one kid. Like what the fuck do you do? You, now you got to pick one. Got to pick your favorite. Yeah. How would you even do it? Or you just give them both. But I mean, and the end of the day, everyone's just like, oh, hey, just get another job like the rest of us, which it makes sense. But like having a kid is very expensive. Because they both have to work, right? Like they both work full the time. The kids, yeah. Yeah. Put them to work. Put them to daycare. Have them be the- <laughs> if, if he was... In an Asian country, he'd already be working right now at two. Oh, yeah. So. I wish I was working as a kid. I'd be so good. Now, imagine, like, how, like, (laughs) how awesome I'd be if I was working as a three-year-old. I would have been such a good child labor worker. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I wanted to work when I was, like, five. I, like, wanted to get a job. I I didn't know how much it sucked. Dude, I'd be, I I would be hustling for that five cents a day. Yeah. Mowing lawns and shit, uh-huh. but get me started early. But that be, here, be here's the thing: stuff together. you need that reward. Yeah, you know what I mean. But what sucks is that like kids, we're so stupid. We look at money and then we look at like candy. We're like, ooh, candy. That's the. Mm-hmm. But imagine that. I would have worked for candy. Yeah, I mean. But or if video I knew, games. But if I knew, like, but I was making minimum wage like the rest, of, but like everybody else as a kid, like working as like a three year old, and I would uh-huh. get minimum wage, and I started like. 18 years old 
forget about student loan. It just doesn't exist anymore because yeah. all that work that you've been doing. And you, dude, if you started at 18, you'd be like, yeah, I got 12 years of a resume already. <laughs> you know what I mean? Insane. And, but, but like, imagine the work history is just so funny. It's like, yeah, just yeah. from, <laughs> from like dishwasher to <laughs> dishwasher bed maker, but oh. it's like so specific. Like how many years they've been working each field? Mining lithium. <laughs> Mining lithium minting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was saying uh, my brother, it's because they both have to work full time and <laughs> it's a thousand dollars a month for daycare. Wait, is I feel like that's a pretty good price for how it's, long it's good, the it's hours are. It's a are, good yeah. price for what it is. Yeah, that's pretty good. But like that on top of rent, yeah. on top of like everything, like it's just like. I feel I feel really bad because like there's so many people out there in similar situations that are you know it, it's very expensive to live nowadays. Everything is just so expensive. The housing market is just yeah really hurting a lot of people. Really bad. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have a name for our charity. We're gonna come up with what is it? Twin Gate. Twin Gate. Twin Gate. It seems a little <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Epsteiny. A Twin Gate. Oh, well, why did I say Gate? I no, don't. G well, isn't Gate? Something where it's like it's oh this is a this is an issue, like we need a, to fix like, it like Ocean Gate, Ocean Pizza, Gate, Pizza Gate. Yeah, what's o Ocean Gate? What's Ocean Gate? Ocean that Gate was, was the, the, that was the was submarine that went down. Yeah, there there was no there was no kid there was no like pedophilia involved in that. <laughs> Why is it called Ocean Gate? I, mean, was, I think uh, the yeah. word gate after is because it's a problem that everybody's talking about. <laughs> okay, am I getting this wrong? Why I have no the, idea. What's the word gate mean after it? I don't know. What is, like, why is there the word gate after something that it, people are talking about? Like something that this gate, like you open the floodgate of the what? flood. Oh, is that what it is? I, the floodgate. I, I don't know. Am I, am I making sense here? And like, yeah, no, it, it sounds good. Where did it start from though? Did it start from like the Epstein thing? I don't know. And it's involving kids. Maybe that's not the best. I should, I'm going to change Let's it. Think about Let's, it I'm going to change it. What do you I'm mean? actually really bad with coming up with names for like a company or something. So I'm going to just, I'm going to well, end this conversation. We'll put some thought into it. Oh, it's Bill Gates. That's charity. It's, it all, it just oh. has to do with Bill Gates. Is that bad still? Is that kind of iffy? Bill Gates? I, I is he know. a weirdo? Yeah. Bill Gates is a weirdo? Yeah. Is that like publicly known? I think it's pretty public. What did, what did people think he did again? Um, He was, he was boys with Epi. Oh, and that's why his wife left him. She like talks about it. Is that like is something that everybody knows? Um, yeah. Is that something that you you like you watch some stuff and you're like, oh, that's definitely. I don't know. Announcer. There's there's like a whole like <clears throat> rabbit hole of like Bill Gates stuff and like what his plan is for the future and what he's trying to do with yeah. the world and. Uh, oh, this uh, this is such an eye roll. What I'm about to say, but, but, you know, the Epstein's like list or like you know the list that they're about to come up or yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been seeing it uh, again uh, all over my TikTok uh -huh. about oh the list is coming out. It's like it, you know, we've I feel like we go through this every year where it's this list that's about to come out mm -hmm. and um, but every time I feel like whenever I see it on my page, it has like no views or no, any, no likes, so it's hard to like believe it. Yeah, like it just, to me, it just I, when I see something like that, it's just I just like, can't oh, believe it's, it's still not out yet. But here's the thing. It's like, it's, 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 it's a thing. Like it's a thing. It's out there. It's like out there. Like Jeffrey Epstein had an Island where they brought, he brought little kids to, and they were, they yeah, were yeah. essay. Like it's a thing. It's a thing. And what, I, it's just crazy that people don't like talk about it more. Like, why is this such like this? Yeah. Why do people see it as like right winged? Why do I feel like people see it as like a conspiracy or like right winged or something when like you, when, the, the topic in general uh is this something that i feel like people are seeing it as or no i think everybody's pretty much on board like the whole epstein thing was pretty terrible and oh, everybody wants it exposed is it is it also like a touchy subject subject because there's a lot of powerful people on that list so nobody well, that's wants why to say it's not coming out is because the, those people are not letting it come out but i feel like a lot of people don't like to talk about it because of people that are connected with people on the list yeah maybe like if there's somebody I knew on the list, I probably wouldn't be like yapping all, all about it all the way. <laughs> like I'd be kind of scared. Like no, if, no, like, no. If, I, think if so. I was like linked to, if like one of your boys, if, if like not one of my boys, but like one of my boys is boys, is uh, boys is on that list. Like I, I just think that's a big target on me. If that person were to see it, and oh, they so you go, hung out with them. They're like, oh, you're, 
why is your boy saying this shit about me? And then mm-hmm. I'm just like next. Right, right. I'm just dead. A heart attack. And then people put like vaping to it. It would just not, be so unfair. You think, okay, so you think if you were like taken out, like a hit was on you, they would try to cover it with vape? Yeah, yeah. They, they, which they is, like which is so unfair. Like, let me go out like that. And then everybody believes it, obviously. Like, oh, look, at have you seen Zane's drone compilation? Obviously, he died of a heart attack. <laughs> and then that, that's how I would perish. That, that's how people remember me. And then we, that we're gonna, we'd have people like, people like you and... <laughs> People like you and somebody else in our group that would just make a bunch of posts about me. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't die. Once. I was like, oh, shut up, fucking, get over and move on. <laughs> just call you conspiracists for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, you're just trying to avenge. You're trying to avenge me. I would. I know you would. I would fight for you. And I would. Uh, I'll I be would, on the sidelines. My ghost. I'd be, would be on the, the sidelines. Truth. I would, I would, I would, and I and I hope you would do that for me. I would absolutely. I'd be really bad at it, but I'll try. I would turn this entire podcast into <laughs> <laughs> just pictures of me memorabilia everywhere, and it, every single episode would be about how you didn't commit suicide. That's or, good. It, I think uh, it, I would, die I, from. I think it'd be a very interesting sh- show to watch. People would keep up with it, but I don't know how long they would keep up with it. I think at some point people would be like, Heath needs Heath needs to get some help. Like it would yeah, just yeah. It'd get really sad at that point. And um, I just wonder how long he, that would he go. Needs to let it go. <laughs> he needs to let it go. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this podcast, Rocket Money. Do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account? Uh-huh. And you have no idea where it's going? Every day. Well, let me tell you, it's all those subscriptions. Think about it. Between streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, parenting apps, it's endless. We're guilty of this, so I use Rocket Money to help me find out what subscriptions I'm actually spending money on. And if you don't know what Rocket Money is, Rocket Money is a personal financial app that helps you find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions, monitor your spending, and help you lower your bills. Exactly. You can see all your subscriptions in one place. And if you see something that you don't want, you cancel it with a tap. And Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped its users on average save over $120 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Exactly. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you got to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. We actually talked about this last week. I just found out that I was paying two hundred dollars a year for a photo editing app and i had no idea i bought it on a whim and i was like i'm gonna cancel this subscription i just wanted to try it out but i was like you know what let me just do it i forgot to do it and then i just found out that i was paying two hundred dollars a year and i was able to cancel it with rocket and there's a reason why these apps do that man Mm -hmm. because they know that's the easiest way to suck all that money out of your account without you even really really realize that again so stop wasting money on things you don't use, baby. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash unfiltered. Again, all you have to do is go to rocketmoney.com slash unfiltered and start saving that money, baby. Because realize, realize, realize. realize. <laughs> Thank you, Rocket Money, for sponsoring today's episode. We love you. Oh, wow. You want to you wanna hop into our little uh, questionnaire? Oh, yeah. We, we want to get serious right now. Well, not serious, but... I don't know. Just get to know each other a little bit more. Okay. Because I'm curious of your thoughts. And I kind of want to ha- just have a little bit more anxiety after this. Oh, you know? is it bad? I forgot to take my Lexapro. So like, okay. no, no, it's not bad. No, no, it's not bad at all. It's just Zane. Zane I, I'm, I'm hyping it up for so for Zane, no Zane called me earlier and he's like, come up with like hard hitting questions. Well, not hard like, hitting questions. And I, like, I didn't, I didn't have time to prep any because I, got in and I was unpacking my bags and packing again to get ready to come over here because I'm leaving straight from the airport. So I don't have any questions uh, pre-written to ask you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just going to go on the spot. We're gonna, I'm going to base it off yours. I'm going to try to... Oh, fuck off. So it's whatever question I ask and you're going to go, well, how do you feel like that about me? That's not fair. No, I'm just going to... I'm going to gauge... Where the conversation is like going. That. I like that. And we'll, we'll just get, we'll get into it. go from there. You just kind of cherry pick and then you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have something in mind you want to kick it off with? Yeah, Let's I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit you with some questions okay. that I've like never asked you before about me. And oh, I just it's want, about it, okay. Oh no, they're not for you. It's not for you. It's for it's. I'm putting you on the spot about me. Okay. Very bad for my mental health, by the way. Is this like hot seat? Is it hot seat? No, hot seat is more like you grilling who, me about who was the last girl that you, that you slept with. Got it. But it's like putting you on the spot for your own deeds. This is kind of 
I'm putting you on the spot for you for my own deeds. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Which is a little, I don't know why I'm doing this to myself, but do you want me to hit you back with some, or you just want to just, you can hit me back with somebody. You can do whatever you want. It sounds like you, this is, just, it was just, okay, instead okay. of doing hot seat on you, I'm going to do a hot yeah, seat yeah. on me. Okay. Got it. I don't know. Here we go. Okay. What was your genuine first impression of me? Did you like me? Did you think I was weird? And did you feel bad for me? Zane, is this a real question? <laughs> I'm just curious. We, uh, me, me, my mom and my little sister, we all came up with the questions that like, okay. I would just love to, because what if you did just like feel bad for me in that moment? Genuine? I would totally get like, I would totally Genuine? get it. Yeah. I hated your hair. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like the, you didn't like the straightened hair. I hated the it. Swoop. Uh, what was it? What was it again? Uh, genuine thoughts. First, uh, uh, first impression of me. Did, did you like me? Did you think I was weird? Did you feel bad for me? I thought you were really funny. That's good. Couldn't stand the skinny jeans with sandals. That was my, that was my look though. You know, I know, no, you, no, know no. you know, yeah, what I was yeah, trying yeah. to go for um, Jeffrey Riot. I'm Jeffrey Riot. <laughs> uh, but I thought you were really funny and, um, I felt that competitive edge between us. Competitive edge. Never heard that one before. All right. What's, <laughs> what's something you want to say to me that you think might hurt my feelings? Oh, you're tacky and I hate you. <laughs> uh, that question was a little too broad, but I'm going to keep it there. Something, something that I want to uh, say to you that I think would hurt your feelings. Yeah, it's, maybe you think about it and you're just like, uh, I'd rather just not say it to him. And just, you know how sometimes you go about life, you just don't say something to somebody because you're just like, ah. Yeah, you want the truth? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I am, as soon as I came out of my mouth, I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> uh, I think you could work on responsibilities. Fucking hate this. <laughs> I'm just I'm choosing to look bad on my own show. Yeah, what do we start? I don't know. I don't know. January first. Okay. Okay. Yeah, hot. right. No, but this is great, right? January first. This is like it's time to change yeah. shit up. Yeah, time to be a better person. Right. We all need to. Okay, <laughs> and I'm sure everybody listening is going yeah. to now look at their friend after hearing this and going, "What's shitty about me? What's shitty about me? Stop it." That's good. I like that. Mm -hmm. Start t like start taking more responsibility or start like being more responsible for like certain things. Being more responsible. Just like, just kind of just do it. Yeah. Instead of expecting shit to happen. Shit to happen. Okay. All right. You, you didn't need to say exactly, but like, I, I, I know, I, I feel like I know what you're talking about. Okay. Okay. That's good. <laughs> That's good. We're going to fight after this. Yeah. We're going to have a long time. So defensive. Gun to our head. Yes, I'd pull the trigger. Me and, um, me and Mariah, there's a gun to our head. Who are you saving? Mariah, that's not, is that even a real question? Good answer. Oh, I have a question. I yeah. keep seeing people talk about this on TikTok. I'm so curious what everybody's like answer is. Yeah. What's the order? Okay. Wife, your daughter, or your mom? For what? Just order. Life or death. Who are you saving? Uh, who m most important? Like just whatever extreme. What's the order? That's really tough. That's really tough. Let's do this. Everybody's gonna die. You can only save one. Or just like yeah, just give me. What's the order? Because how I, old? How old is the daughter? Doesn't matter. Oh, you want to hear something messed up? Okay, five. <laughs> You're like if she's twenty minutes. She <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Because I have my order, but it's not what people think. And I see girls commenting and they're like saying not the order that I would I, think. I, can, I can't wait to hear your order. Okay. And I'll tell you my order. Okay. Me and my wife are doing great, right? Yeah. We're all doing good. Yeah. Everybody's got an amazing relationship. What a horrible thing I just asked. How are we all doing? Am I, We're on, all the, doing am good, I right? on the brink of a divorce? <laughs> We're all doing good. Okay. That's the thing. If you're on the brink of a divorce, that changes shit up. Yeah. Okay. It was a very happy, loving family. Okay. Um, my wife, my kid, my mom. Sorry, mom. Oh, mom. It's a, it's a very rare situation. I know she's, I know she doesn't know like this. Just tears. <laughs> as soon as <laughs> Yeah. Right. My, my mom would be last because that's what my mom would want. She would be so upset with me. Yeah. yeah. If I didn't do it the way, that way. The reason why my wife first than my kid because you could always make another one. Oh, uh -huh. 
Interesting. Look, it's a it's a it's a bad situation, right? No, no, I, it's, I it's, it's have, crazy because there's so many different answers. Like a lot of people were saying, like mom first, and like obviously, like I love my mom to death. Like I like that's why I asked how old is the kid because if it was like a brand new like brand new infant. Then it's like you don't have there's not you don't there, even like the thing yet. <laughs> it's it's just I just found it's out a my, difficult situation. I just found out my brother didn't like his kid until like just recently. <laughs> How old is the kid? Eight. <laughs> Just turned two. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's the terrible ones and terrible twos. It's, it's I, I get it. Yeah. But um That sounded really bad. He loved it. It's kid. it's really it's you no, know, it's really bad. It's really bad. And like having to make that decision on the spot is it's tough. But that's I think that would be the order. I think that order makes the most sense to me. Okay. What's your order? <sighs> Obviously I don't have children yet, so I don't know. But in my head, I go child, wife, mom. And that would, I think that would have been my second one. Is child, because in the moment, you're not going to, like, you're not going to let your child go. Like, I feel like a lot of people, like, even me saying wife, kid, but I bet you if you put me right there and mm -hmm. I had to make a decision, there's, I a, also, it, it's a, there's a 50, like, there is a good chance that I, it might just hit me. And I'd have to save my kid. But I also look at just anything like that child has, like if it was my kid or somebody else's kid, the child has more life to live. So I would always go for somebody that's a younger age. Yeah. Like if I, if there was a car that was drowning in a lake and there was a child and an adult, you would save the child if you could only pick one. Yeah. Regardless. So, but the adult also, is Jennifer Lopez. From the block? From the block. Oh. <laughs> Mariah would want me to Rihanna, go for Rihanna pregnant. Save both at the same time. My kid could be a serial killer, right? Right, oh, okay, okay. right. So I'm, I'm looking at my kid extra hard at this moment because mm. I got to pick. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is my kid going to be a little shit? A little spoiled brat? Right. If he's an honor roll student or if he's got like No, no. I To me, honor roll does I don't care about honor roll. Okay, okay. I think just as long as they're like a kind, yeah. I think that they're going to be a good person. Uh-huh. Can you see that when they're five? Yeah, I, th I think they got some personality. I think you could, you, I think every time there is a serial killer or somebody really bad, I think parents were able to see it when they were five. There's got to be signs. There has to be signs. I don't think parents want to admit it. I feel bad saying this, but I guess that's why my uh, cousin is somewhere. I'm sorry? I, I told you about this. No. My, my cousin that tried it, to- Is a murderer? That tried to kill the other cousins. I think wait it, wait like uh, young like how old was I your think, cousin? I think five to eight maybe. I I don't I oh, don't like a, like actually like murder? yeah. In the middle of the night, he would go grab knives and try to like stab them. Holy shit! I did not know that. Yeah, I think he. I don't know if he has like schizophrenia or something. Um, it's kind of like a taboo like topic. Like not, yeah. nobody in the family really talks about I it. No, it's because it's it's like it's sad too. I don't. It sucks. Yeah, I don't know for sure where he is. Um, but how, he, old, how old is his cousin now? Maybe 19, 20 now. Wow. I think so. But yeah, we don't really talk about it. Uh, nobody nobody really knows, but he was a violent, very violent child that had like some sort of like mental disorders. Um, That's so sad. And kept like trying to attack. And them. as a parent, when you have a kid like that, all you have to, all you, th all you're thinking about is what was in my body that like, did this you mm -hmm. know what i mean like how many how many little like sperms in you do you think are like serial killer genes it's gotta be like that right like just that's, there's a, like that's a bag how it of works them. and then like one of them in there's got to be like the next justin bieber is it like a and different, then one's got different color to, is it tinted a little bit like if you put all those eggs on like under a microscope if you're when you look at it, you're like oh this one is up to no good like what what is it it's gotta be something another charity uh, saving sp sp saving sperms or very good we take all the sperms we uh we put it in the facility and we get microscope and we have uh people look at each one and any Psy psychiatric uh spermiology mm -hmm. are you do you feel like you're learning as you're watching the podcast as a viewer madison and what have you gained from this episode have you lost brain cells good mission and, accomplished. And, that, and that's the show all right hit me with another hard hitter if you were a girl and you were dating me, what is one thing you think we would have a really hard time with? Uh, communication. Not, 
Okay. Uh, elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know how to communicate in that moment. <laughs> is do you think this is outside? This is like pertaining to issues I have already, or you think I just, I just don't care um, for communication. So I think now this is me as a friend to you. Uh, Fuck off. You think people know what you're thinking? Does that make Ooh, sense? Yeah, that that's my middle name right there. So you think people can read your mind? I uh, no, no. I'm I'm just I'm shocked because um I've known this. Yeah, I'm just I was way too afraid to admit it. Really? It was nice to hear it coming out of someone okay. else's mouth. Yeah. I've never had anybody tell me that. That was just like a, a, a tra like a train hit me. <laughs> like you'll, you'll come at me and you'll say something. And I'll get, uh, I'll get yeah. very annoyed that like you didn't read my mind before. Yeah. That. I'm like, and, I have no idea what you're talking about. And it's crazy that I just go along with that. Yeah. You, you'd come up and just be like, they were green. I'd be like, what was green? And then you'd be like, I do <laughs> the the car and i'm like oh you didn't yeah. say that like yeah that's yeah but and you did it that was very surface level but there will be like there will be there there will be times where i i'm just annoyed that somebody's not doing it the way that i would do it that's another thing yeah yeah, yeah. how the hell are you supposed to know how I like you would do you it? would be upset if uh say you wanted something in a specific order in the house, right? Yeah. You wouldn't tell them to put it in that order. I would just expect You would just them. expect it, and they don't know that you would want that, so they would do it a different way, and you'd be like, why aren't they? Yeah, very poor communication. Got it. Next question. <laughs> that's that's really good. That, that's a perfect example, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, you assign me with a serious task that I need to get it done. What is that one thing you would least <laughs> trust me to do? Like, what's a responsibility that I don't think you can hold up on your I guess your we end? already went over this, right? I would just say anything in a time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything that has to do with moving. Anything that has a, a deadline. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just like very last minute. Me not having my suit ready for like Matt's wedding. Yeah. For Matt's but, wedding. But I also think you're a type of person, person that strives under pressure. Mm -hmm. Like, you won't get something done unless it's do or die. Does that make yeah. sense? You need the urgency and the stress of it all to be able to execute. That's true. Yeah, I think my man is trying to settle down here. I think he's he's trying to prime yeah right. And, I, I'm I'm he's trying to prime and prep for a relationship. Yeah, no, it sounds like it. And um, I, yeah, I just want the ladies to listen to this and then kind of comment below. And I just want to read a ton of shit about me that I probably not gonna want to see. I think you talk before thinking about what you're saying. Oh, 100 percent. I think you're excited to give something in a conversation you know what i mean like you'll just start saying things mm -hmm. um but i think if you took your time but for some reason when i do take my time and it comes out of my mouth it like doesn't make sense even more so that's why i feel like i need to rush it Blurt out of it. my brain like because it makes more sense than when i do sit there and think about it mm -hmm. like you i think you know what you want to say yeah but same thing with mariah like her mind is so far ahead of her words that she's her mouth is trying to catch up with her thoughts because the thought is going on to the next thing. So she's just trying to yeah play catch up. I think you guys both have that, but it's not bad. But it's amazing. I love it. Deal with it every day. Trying to slow down. Um, I have a piece of advice. That wasn't one of the questions. I'm good. Thank you. This is this is about finding love, right? Oh, <laughs> this that's is good. A, that's good. This is about finding love. Yeah. Okay. You don't initiate anything. Mm hmm. You expect things to just happen and present themselves yeah. without you putting any effort into it. And I think you need to start trying more. The way you look at relationships, you need somebody to meet you at a bar and just be like, you want to have a drink? Let's have a drink. Okay, tomorrow I'll see you in the mor morning. You're my boyfriend. We're dating now. Does that make sense? Like yeah. you're not... You're not going to spend the time to go on date after date after date and get to know somebody and then like let a relationship build. It's kind of, you don't put the time in to see if it would go somewhere. Yeah. Like your other relationship, it just was like, okay, we're boyfriend, girlfriend. I don't know how this just happened. I just met you, but we're doing this. Now, I'm a I spontaneous guess. person. I love it. It's but fun. like, that's what I mean. Like right now it's either somebody's going to be like, Hey, I'm seeing you tomorrow. You're my boyfriend. Uh -huh. Or you have to like start trying to. Yeah, I know. I see it like a movie, right? Like a rom-com just quick. It's easy. It's fun. 
Spont- yeah, no, but you're absolutely right though. It's um, it's work. Yeah. For especially for a serious one, it's work. You have yeah. to like treat it like a. You know, it's good. It's good for it to be natural, but you have to like. It's also precious at the same mm-hmm. time. You have to go on dates, feel it out, vibe it out, and then. And if it happens, it happens. Now let me ask you some questions. Yeah. What's the most dates you've been on with a person that like didn't work out? Like, was there a girl that you went on five dates with and you're like, ah, oh, this just isn't for me or um, like since your last relationship? I'm pretty good. Or I know after one. Okay. Uh, one date is a long time because so you've never, was, you've never been be on. For, it'll be through a dinner, right? Like we, we'll go out for dinner. I'm sitting there for a good, we're sitting there for a good two, three hours. You you get to know a lot about a person yeah. in like two, three hours, especially just like the way they are, what they're talking about. Right. I think it's like easy for me. Has there been day. anybody that you went on a second date with? No. Wow. I'm not dating a lot right now either, just because I feel like I'm just so focused on mm-hmm. everything else. Yeah. I feel like my relationship right now is work. It's just like this podcast, mm-hmm. you just everything work wise. Like I see that as a relationship in my head. I'm just like, I can do this, this, and this to make sure that this relationship is yeah, yeah. doing better, which is like kind of unhealthy, but I also like, don't mind it. Yeah. And that's why I love like to me, work is so important and anything relationship wise is second, but that's why I kind of want the relationship to come like so left field mm-hmm. because my focus right now is work. I I feel very lucky and grateful that I work with Mariah. Mm-hmm. I have her there to help me with work, but also we have our relationship together and it's like we're pushing towards the same goal. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, I really like the aspect of a relationship where the, the couple works together. Yeah. And like I love the fact that we wake up and we attack the day together as a team. It, it sounds honestly just more fun. I think that's why so many people, you know, find relationships in the workplace. Like a lot of yeah. people start dating coworkers yeah. because you're around them so much. You know what I mean? You're with them a, f- a third of your day. Yeah. You get to see how they problem solve and you get to see how you work together with them. I don't know, I'm very, very lucky that I guess, it ma- I guess it makes sense that you kind of want, to be with somebody that can problem solve just like you do. Somebody that understands your scheduling, your the way you can manage your time. Mm-hmm. I think you would have a better chance of relationship success if they did something similar. Yeah. It just makes sense. And I feel like it flows better. Your days are better. You are able to attack the day together. And um, Any influences you were into? Uh, no. Nobody's catching your eye. Influ- no, not in the influencer world. I also don't watch influencers, so it's really hard to. Mm-hmm. I also haven't left my house in six months, <laughs> yeah. so that probably doesn't help a lot. Any fitness gurus? Heat. That's what I, I need to start uh, watching more like gym content because I feel like I don't watch any. Yeah, yeah. I think once I'm done, I'll have a lot more free time. I'm just so I, I'm so fo- I've been I've been so focused. It's crazy with this whole. It was just a whole transformation in general. Yeah. Like to me, just saying no to everything has made this. It's empowering. Yeah. It has just made this a lot. Um, I wouldn't say a lot easier. It's made it much more um, like graspable. Like at the end, like just saying no to everything. Now I know that I can like finish it. Yeah. You just have to say no to everything. Like not being able to go out with my friends for dinners and or part like you, it sucks. And you're going to want to go, even if you're not like yeah, getting yeah. wild or getting crazy. I mean, if you don't drink or do any like that, that helps a lot. It was very hard in the beginning for me to, I, I stopped completely going out of my house and doing anything for like the first few months while I was going sober Yeah, because I couldn't handle being around other people drinking. I would be crawling in my skin because I needed to have a drink yeah. and I wasn't able to handle it. Like, it just looked like they're just having so much fun. I felt sick. Like I was like, I need, I need to drink with these people right now. Like I, I am not myself. Mm-hmm. It was probably like that for like five, six months. And then now, like, I don't even think about it. If I go out or we go to like a wedding or we go to an event or something, like 
Doesn't oh. it doesn't even cross my mind? I have a, I have a question for you because I feel like I've been experiencing this a lot, and obviously it's just our own brains. But when you go out with other drunk people, do you start to feel like they're all upset with you for yeah, not drinking with them? Absolutely. But it's not it's not true though. But why do we feel like that's what happens every time we go out and we're uh, and you're sober, but everybody else is drinking? Oh, it, I mean, because I know when I'm drunk and I see a sober person, I'm not the, the last thing I'm thinking is, what are you doing here? Or like, why, why aren't you drinking? It's you maybe you maybe ask once and once they say no, you just like that's been Mariah's life for the past six years. You know what I mean? Like yeah. every time we go, it, everybody would just be like, lighten up, have a drink. Yeah. God. Like, and it was just like, once you hear that over and over, you're like, okay. but, but it could be a mixture of. Obviously, being a bunch uh, around a bunch of drunk people when you're sober, it gets annoying. So your face probably is not going to look the most excited. Yeah. So when a drunk person sees that, I mean, they're like, "Ooh, they're not, they're not very happy with me. I'm going to leave them alone." And then maybe that, like that miscommunication or that. I think there's different layers. I know what you're saying, yeah. but I think there's different layers to it. Um, I think there's a subconscious thought process that happens when you're drinking and you see somebody else that's not drinking out and they're having like a good time there's a little bit of maybe jealousy mm -hmm. like you would never in your head be like oh i'm jealous they're they're having a good time in there but it would be the fact that like i'm drunk right now i needed to get drunk to be having a good time and enjoy myself mm -hmm. and they don't have to I think it's I like would, a, I, I could never get jealous of somebody like sober having a good time. Honestly, that's like great. When I would, I would feel like, that, Oh, though. you would feel that. Like, I think there's that thought process that happens. Mm. Like I would look at other people that would be able to go out and have a good, like I would just, I need to have a drink right now because I'm not having a good time. Like yeah. I needed the, to let Liquid go and courage. relax and like lighten up and have a good time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Food for thought. And that's why I quit drinking. No, I'll never quit. I can, I honestly can't wait to drink New Year's. It's it, it's it's fun. It's fun. It's fun having like a goal yeah. to drink or like planning it out. Because I I never planned it out. I just I woke up. I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna drink in an hour. But now I would like I feel like I would never do that now. I can, mm -hmm. I don't think I could ever do that again. Like even before, even in the beginning of or before the transformation, I I I was planning it out. Pretty often, like oh, the I best is when you just start drinking and you're. It's not a plan. Ooh, oh. my my best days, mm -hmm. my best days. But that type of life, it leads you to um. You just you just you just stop everything. Yeah, then that's like the life you choose. It's just like oh, if I'm gonna drink every day, I might as well just be eating like shit too, and then mm -hmm. back to where you started. But I really Slippery don't want to do that. But I can't like now that I have like the control, the self control for literally anything, mm -hmm. except for my chocolate chip cookies. But I will, I still will have self control. Like I know, even bro, even when I like take a it's, bite you, out of fucking cookie yeah. and I eat it, I feel like I just gained thirty pounds. I think, but, um, because I I did the same transformation thing, it changed me for good. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. like it taught me that I could be that person and be disciplined and have the self control. Because before that, I didn't think it was me. I didn't think I could do it. Yeah, and then when I did it you now know that you can do these things. Yeah. Um, so I don't think you'll ever, ever go back to being out of control. Yeah. I really don't like, yeah, I, I can't, it, it would be really tough for me to get back there. If I, if I ever get back there, just know it was really hard yeah. to get there. That means shit's going really bad. Okay. That means shit's downhill and you're, and you, you're not doing good. You should sit me down and be like, Zane, what's going on? That, because I, I'm, I'm making up for something. Okay. For sure. So I'll, just I'll intervene. In, watch, watch for those signs. All right, you want to jump into the unwind real quick, and then oh, oh, before we go to the unwind, I have a present for you. What? Your, oh, your gift it... came. Ah. I, I, it, I, it just hit me. I'll be right back. Should I close my eyes? Absolutely. I'm ready. Ow! It sounds big. Oh, it is. So I know you recently had to give this up. It's very sad because I really know I know you really, really enjoyed this thing. So I decided to bring it back in a scale where it's non expensive 
doable. And I feel like you're going to keep it around for a while. And you could also just like, once you're done with it, maybe you could hang it up, put it on a shelf, let your kids play with it. What? I don't know. Um, so in that case, open your eyes. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's RC. I, I saw it on TikTok. I saw somebody playing with it. I was like, what is that? It It's so detailed. Wait, it's it not even funny. It's like a real truck. It's crazy. But I, I, I saw it firsthand being played with. This is really cool. And um, it had your name all over it. Dude, the detail. Yeah, look, dude, look, look at that. Are you kidding me? Just look watching, at, watching you be uh, watching you take this thing apart. Do you get practice? Do practice on this car before you do the deed on your real cars. Look at know? the suspension on this thing. Oh, this audio is, listeners, this is a um, it's a what do you even call like a like a toy car? It's not a toy car. A, to me, it's, it's a, like a it's an RC car, uh, for off roading. They didn't have the brand truck that you had, but it was it was pretty damn close. Like it looks just like the truck you had. No, that's fine. This is a this is a taco baby. This is really cool. Fun, right? I love this. I've seen actually people build um, setups in their house. Uh huh. They put like ramps and shit like, ar yeah, around like the kitchen, and you can like drive it off road. Imagine putting Dean in the trunk of that. You have a Man, lot of fun with sick. it, you know. Actually, I I love this. Thank you. Dr dress up Dean as a like a, I don't know, like a pilot, and then you just. <laughs> this is really. I, I can't wait for you to set this thing up. Thank you. No, I, I genuinely really like this. This is cool. Thank you. That's it. Um, but yeah, guys, oh, it's you could it's you, a new year, twenty twenty four. Yep. Ew, twenty twenty four. I can't. That's so weird. Just remember, sometimes you lose things, but then they come back. That's right. Trying to come up with a, like a, <laughs> trying to go with something deep. Sometimes you have year. to let go and let God. Yeah. Sometimes quitting. Is the best thing you can do. If you quit, that just allows you to start something new. That was good. That's, That's what I, meant I just to came say. up with. That's that. what I meant to say. Sometimes or saying goodbye <laughs> allows you to say hello to somebody else. <sighs> wow. Did that have to do with the mo mother daughter? I don't know. Wife? Okay. We could tie it into it. All right. We're going to get into the unwind. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode of Zane and Heath Unfiltered. You can check out these episodes every mm. Monday audio form on all the podcast platforms. And you can check out these episodes video form, which mm -hmm. is always the best way to watch these episodes and listen, um, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Zane and Heath. We post every Tuesdays. We That's also nice, have, a, we also have a Patreon, uh, where we, um, post bonus episodes, unwind episodes where we leave the cameras running for another 30, 45 minutes and we just like continue the episode just or it's out. like a mini episode. Yeah. Yep. We also have like live Q and A's. We have a private discord and we also just kind of keep you guys updated before anyone else on the interweb. Bonus episode every single month. Um, either a drunk high on some seltzers, mm -hmm. something feeling good. Yeah, baby. And you can get all that for $5 a month. And now you can start, uh, you can do a seven, uh, seven day trial for free. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to commit the $5 a month, you try it out. See if you like it. Yeah. Put your credit card info and you try it out for seven days and then you unsubscribe the seventh day or mm -hmm. the sixth day. So you don't get charged and you guys can try to eat up as much content as you want in those six days. Um, but yeah, we're going to jump into that right now. So we'll see you guys soon and we love you so much. Thank you for watching. And we hope you have the best year ever let's make this year 2024 baby bitch. your year baby this is your year love you peace peace and blessings y'all